All right. Welcome, everybody, to today's webinar, where we're so, so pleased to be joined by Jason Chong and Phil Ling, our friends from Fullerton School District. Um, they're going to be sharing their experience and insights about creating a flexible STEM festival. Um, it's something that we, the Ozabot team, have been able to see them do firsthand as sponsors of their STEM Nation event this year. And we're just so glad to have them here to talk about it. Um, so without further ado, I'll quickly go over our agenda for today. Um, we're going to start things off with some housekeeping, just like the basics of the Ozabot webinar format. Um, covering details for entering our giveaway, and then a quick poll just so that we can get to know all of you a little bit better. Um, from there, we'll get to hear from Jason and Phil. They're going to provide a brief history of STEM events at Fullerton SD. Um, then we'll get into what was different and what changed for 2021. I'm guessing you guys can venture a guess about that. Um, then they'll wrap up with lessons learned and successes. Um, a spoiler alert about the successes, they had really great student engagement with STEM Nation 2021. Um, that's part of why we were so excited and eager to have them come here for a webinar, because we are so impressed with you guys by what you and the staff and the teachers and the students at Fullerton accomplished this year. Um, we think it's, we all think it's really important to celebrate the wins during this pretty difficult school year. Um, so with that, Melissa is going to talk us through the housekeeping. All right, great. Um, thanks, Adrian. Uh, my computer is letting me know that my connection is unstable. So if uh, there's any issues, please just let me know and I can hand it back over to somebody who may have more stable connection. Um, but everyone, as an attendee, you're, um, you are on mute and your camera's off, so you don't have to worry about muting yourself or turning your camera off. We'd love for you to participate in the conversation. Use the Q&A feature to ask any questions you'd like. Um, we're gonna have a Q&A session at the very end of the webinar. You can upvote and comment on one another's questions with your insights. You can also um, start a dialogue in our chat, but please remember to change the two fields to all panelists and attendees so that everyone can see your messages. Um, and we'd love to know what, what brought you to this webinar today. So um, feel free to share that in the chat. Um, we have Ozabot staff members moderating that chat. Um, Cassandra is on deck to answer any questions that might come up um, in the meantime, if you have any specific ones. If you are looking for this content, um, the recording and the slides will be available. If you opt in for updates uh, through Oz the Ozabot website, you'll get this through email. Otherwise, you can visit our YouTube page or our webinar page for both the slides and the recording. Um, we are also um, giving away an uh, educator entry kit to one lucky winner today. Um, so if you can go to ozo.bot slash giveaway, um, Cassandra has put that in the chat, the link that you can click on. Um, go ahead, put in your name and your email address. We are limiting it to one entry um, per um, attendee today. Um, just to make it equitable and uh, fair chances for everyone. And you must be present for the entire webinar to win. Um, and we will announce the winner at the end. So we'll close that in about 10 minutes. Um, let's give everyone a little extra time, maybe 15 past the hour. We'll close that giveaway entry. Um, so make sure you head on over there and give us your info so that you qualify for the giveaway. Good luck, everyone. Um, and from there, we'll go ahead and introduce ourselves. So I'll start and Melissa, then I'll hand it off back to you. Um, I'm Adrian White. I'm the Director of Marketing at Ozabot. That means I get to work really closely with Melissa and our education team and really closely with our diverse community of educators. Um, so I, I actually have a background in art and technology, so I'm really happy to be part of a company that's all about STEAM and very much about giving children the tools to create with technology. Melissa, I'll kick it off to you. Great, thanks. Uh, my name is Melissa Tui. I'm a former teacher. I taught kindergarten and first grade. Um, I founded a coding, engineering, and design thinking program at a Title I charter school in South LA. I've coached teachers in implementing computer science, and when I'm not at Ozabot, I am at UCLA, go Bruins, um, pursuing my doctoral degree. <laughs> yes, we have, our, wow, full house of Bruins today. How exciting. Um, pursuing my doctoral degree where I am studying computer science implementation in elementary school classrooms. So I'm really excited to have Justin and Philip here, Jason and Philip, I'm sorry, <laughs> Jason and Philip here, um, and all of you in the audience. So I'll pass it to Jason to introduce himself. 
Yeah, hi everyone. My name is uh, Jason Chong. I'm a program coordinator uh, for educational services in the Fullerton School District. Um, I'm my former math teacher in junior high, as well as a, a tech TOSA and math specialist. Um, kind of had a lot of passion in computer science and just uh, the, excited about what you know is the next thing for students and experiences. So uh, I get to work with a wonderful team of people. Uh, I think it's all about who you work with. So I, I, one part of my team members is Phil and I'll let him introduce himself. Hi everyone, I'm Phil Ling. Uh, I'm not a Bruin, I'm married to a Bruin. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm in the family. <laughs> Uh, but I am a program specialist for the Fullerton School District. Uh, before that, I was a technology TOSA as well, like Jason. Before that, I taught uh, language arts um, at the junior high level, and then also in the elementary setting, I taught sixth grade and here in Fullerton, and then also in New York City as well, too. And so my passion also lies into allowing students to uh, explore and connect the dots between what they're learning so that it makes sense to them from a bigger picture, whether it be technology tools, the content in the core area, whatever it might be, they can make those connections and then do something long term and see the bigger picture. And so that's why part of why we're here today. Great. Jason and Phil, thank you so much for joining us. Um, so from here, we're actually going to dive into things with Jason. Um, Jason, if you could share a little bit about the history of STEM events at Fullerton SD, because we know it didn't all just start this year with STEM Nation 2021. Yeah, um, I always like to, tell, like to tell our story. Um, I think it's something that we all like hopefully aspire to do in terms of providing and supporting students and preparing them for the future. And in Fullerton, kind of same thing. Uh, when I was a tech TOSA, I had the opportunity to be able to kind of work with teachers and get into the classrooms. And in doing so, um, it was still pretty early on trying to get computer science, robotics, or coding into the classrooms. And so seeing that need, um, we find a purpose in what we do. So uh, as a tech TOSA, my purpose became, I want to see how I can provide computer science type experiences because it's something that's not very easy for just teachers who don't have that background and to no one's fault is more of how do we support that. And so in doing so, uh, a lot of times we like to give a purpose through events. Um, I sometimes I call it like a Trojan horse, like, you know, we kind of show something that's shiny in there and before you know it, you get so involved in it that you become one that is a believer in it. And so uh, two big events that we were able to start off with, the first one being Robot Nation, um, kind of took a page out of Lego EV3 world. Um, that's pretty big around already established when they do their um, uh, Lego Mindstorm kind of competition in Legoland. We're in California, so down the street from us, Legoland had a big challenge. Uh, and Cal Poly Pomona, it's a university in our area that also does a robotics challenge. So taking a page out of their book, seeing that a lot of times people are motivated by competition. Not everyone, but competition also is a good way to start thus colorful shirts, team shirts, logos, things like that, you find pride and connection into that. So we kind of took that and did our own. And we said, we'll make our own robot nation uh, and make it a event, make it a competition at first. Uh, as you see the picture on the right and left, um, there are students from kinder through eighth that start off with robotics. And in doing so, we have to create and support the need. And the need is the instruction and the application or just even the know-how to work with kids and students on how to program it, how to build it, et cetera, how to, how to problem solve. So um, we were able to kind of create a, an organic team of uh, teachers that were saying, I'm willing to try it, um, growth mindset, uh, fail forward kind of people and said, I, I'll, I, I, I believe in it. I think kids will love this. I think that this is something that I like to see the students be able to do. And so that's where the birth of our nation came. Uh, all the, it starts with always teachers, uh, teachers that are open-minded and willing to try that. And so we did, and we, we are a school district of 20 teachers, uh, 20 schools, uh, 17 K, six eights, and three comprehensive junior highs. And the first year we got about 16 schools where we found teachers that said, I would want to be a part of this. I want to help it. So we got together. We took a page out of that competition, said, what are elements of these competitions can we do? And uh, we Fullertonized it. Uh, we like to do that as a phrase. We Fullertonized things and made it our own. And year one, we had about you know, 16 schools, 300 students participate. 
then year two jumped to about 700 with 19 schools. And then by year three, we were renting out the Marriott uh, with over a thousand students, uh, all 20 schools and um, well over 2000 parents and community coming to support it. So when you put on an event, I think like wedding planning or any kind of event you put on uh, when it's big and uh, people find purpose and connection, uh, it kind of takes off. And that led to another event then, which we call the Congressional App Challenge, which no matter what state you are in, uh, in the United States, I think I see that there were several people from like Michigan, Missouri, uh, every congressional district can choose to participate in the Congressional App Challenge. It's usually meant for high schoolers, but they've lowered it down to junior high or seven through 12. And um, you basically can do basic uh, coding and you make your own app for a, like a real world problem. And they kind of have a competition out of it by selecting and you create a video and share why your app is uh, important and what it does and you uh, submit that and the congressional district should, uh, everyone has it differently, but can celebrate that. And so we partnered with our local congressional district, called it the uh, Fullerton School District Congressional App Challenge, asked them to lower it down to K6 as well. So we were able to kind of own that element of the app challenge and that also then use that's the picture in the middle where we had multiple schools about eight that wanted to sign on, sign on. It's again it always starts with our wonderful teachers who are curious and willing to want to try and um, they were able to get congressional certificates uh, they were able to get grab bags or, or goodie bags from the colleges that donate uh, to the app challenge because it's i think congressional rules you cannot get money or donate money but uh, so again all of these events really springboard from uh, student experience, like Phil said. So that's what our always our purpose starts from. And so what happened was pandemic. So what is different, next slide I think shares basically that what was different about this year is obviously the big thing, a pandemic occurred, uh, which won't allow us to do what we used to do, which is thousands of people together celebrating robotics or coding or whatnot. So our, another Fullerton way is then how do we revamp what exists and make it still work and still make it unique and uh, equitable and accessible. Those are always key words that uh, we are very cognizant of and wanting to do. And so in doing that, uh, we said, why don't we smash both events into one? Uh, always looking around, let's go ahead and try that. Let's put together the Robot Nation and the App Challenge and say, well, it is still all computer science related. And I know, I'm glad I noticed there were a lot of STEM teachers and coaches or librarians. I know that it's very difficult to do it on your own. So we're coming from the district lens. So we do have that support. I know that's a little bit different. So um, in the classroom, I think, or in the district, finding somebody that's willing to hear the cause and buy into it and gather others together kind of would probably build your cause. But that's kind of what we're able to do. And we started that because Phil and I being from the classroom, how I want to put that lens and say, well, our teachers need this. And so we want to make it accessible. So the era of pandemic, I think, has been online or distance learning or everything remote. So we said, let's take the Robot Nation and the Congratulations App Challenge goals and themes, put it asynchronously, let students experience it with their families and still make it a celebratory event. So to do that, next slide is, and by the way, on that slide on the bottom, there is a link. I don't think they have access to the slide deck. So I don't know if Phil, somebody want to put in the chat. And here's the website. Um, to make it asynchronous, we had a home base that everyone can go and see our challenges and what they could do. We, of course, had to revamp it all in the sense that it is not a traditional robotics challenge, but it is a, um, I guess, a festival of some sort, if you will, that they get to just all experience and try together, friends, parents, families, whoever they want to. Uh, we use Google Classroom. Phil's gonna go over all the details, so I'm going into too many details, but there's a website, there's a link if you wanna see it. But to make it all happen also, we need funding. So what we do is we like to find wonderful, wonderful partners and nothing happens without great people working together. So we have a foundation, Fullerton Education Foundation, who supports our technology or supports our learning. They were able to donate, they self fundraise and help donate a big chunk to help us get us a lot of swag. And of course, Ozobot, which they were wonderful. They've been around, they're early, big heavy hitters in the game um we try to we would love to have partnered earlier but didn't have a chance but the silver lining of pandemic i think they brought us together and uh we we i forget who we talked to first but um we were able to make a connection i think I mean, maybe it was diego or adrian it was you and we just shared what we were having and thought would be great if we could get a powered by 
uh, a, a legit name in the industry. And um, it was wonderful that Ozobot came alongside of us and said, yes, they believe in what we did too. And I think that helps. So everyone who's trying to put something together, uh, there's so many resources in the community. I think finding that partnership and person willing to, even if it's a small local business, that's Robo Nation also how it started. We got local people build, buying into it, the rotaries, the key clubs, the different places that said, oh yeah, I'd love to chip back in to help students and to for education's sake. And a little bit here, a little bit there, help us put up things in shirts, medals, they go a long way. Uh, certificates, they really truly uh, bring um, people to the room. Uh, they'll only sign up for anything sometimes if they see a medal or a certificate. So uh, Ozobot, Ozobot being very generous, we're willing to even come into one of our webinars to talk about you know, women in the industry and, and STEAM and things like that because uh, we're very big on you know, career and college readiness and you know, different things like that. And so we really appreciate the partnership Ozobot has given us. But um, that's kind of a little bit of our journey and Phil kind of can show you all the real logistic, real meat that happened in the last couple of months. Yeah, just to jump in on the partnership side, I think it was through, you know, Fullerton has been a customer of Ozobot going way, way back. Um, so I think it was through Diego, your account executive, you guys reached out and then it just got, you know, passed on to the marketing team and the education team got involved. And I think it's just a note for everyone listening that, you know, even if, even if you're looking at a larger brand that you want to partner with, it's worth reaching out and asking the question because um, we're so glad that you guys, Jason and Phil reached out because we think this is such a valuable partnership and it's just the beginning of something. So. And just to mention what we've actually gotten a lot of value out of watching you guys structure and organize STEM Nation. Um, you mentioned Lego and their robotics challenges. Uh, an Ozobot competition or challenge is something we've been wanting to do for a while. And we feel like we've learned so much from you that we're now in a better position to do one of our own. So thank you. <laughs> and I will move on to the next slide. All right, there is one question. I think it's actually something maybe Jason would want to answer too. Um, I think from Lori, um, in terms of were these events, in terms of competition, maybe the prep for the competition and then the day of, how that worked outside of or inside of instructional days and minutes. Oh yeah, um, the, uh, back in the, I, I'm assuming about Robot Nation or Congressional App Challenge, those were actually a hybrid of both. So we had Robot Nation where some sites were willing to put it within their day. Um, some schools had, time like genius hour or, or um, different segments of time that they ded dedicated to say I'm willing to do this twice a week or every day for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, majority of them did it as clubs after school uh, for the robot nation component at least um, and uh, they met like I would say two three times or almost every day after school sometimes depending on how close it got to competition but in general I would say average like twice a week um, and Another component that just came to mind and financially though, like it was a big investment. Our district was willing to put into that idea. So, I mean, getting kits, getting computers, getting um, Lego sets or whatever component the school needed as they were willing to start a club, we supported it and helped that. So that was mainly after school. And then our congressional app challenge was more in the day. A lot of teachers try to intertwine it with their uh, ELA for when it comes to uh, writing, informational writing, they try to write their script for the app challenge video and use their ELA time. And then they did the coding in like a free segment. So was, instead of doing um, a certain day's silent reading or free time, they would use this time to do the coding. Uh, again, a few schools did it as clubs after school. Uh, but the app challenge, they try to do more in the day, which was great. And or they use their science time and try to do like the design thinking process or they would use um, their math time and try to like figure out coding logic and they would use that as a sample for their math. So uh, the answers to, but the, Lori, the long answer, sorry, was that it was both. Um, and we held the events though after school. They were all night or at, uh, over the weekend events. Robot Nation was like a two day event on a Saturday, a Friday and Saturday. Um, when we were at the Marriott, it was Friday night, all day, like half day Saturday. And it was like, like it was, um, things that we had intentionally put as a special day so that it felt like they were going to something and uh, being a part of something that you could see the whole magnitude of everyone being together. 
Yeah, and Jason is a mastermind when it comes to ideation uh, and creating things. And so him being the founding father of this Robot Nation event, um, I think ideation always starts with uh, great people uh, and people you work with. And so Jason and I both came from the same school site as teachers and classroom teachers. And so we uh, have known each other for a while. And so I think part of where no matter what level you teach at, whether a classroom teacher or a district office, um, I think when you have people who you love working with and you love spending time with, and that shared vision together, I think you could do a lot, um, whether for your school site or for your district. And so um, I, think, I think where you are um, is partly relevant as long as you have those, those shared um, individuals who you can, you can combine forces and energy with as well too. Um, so this slide here is just a video, the intro video. It's a four minute video and if we can post the link and then if you wanna watch, watch it later, we don't have to watch it right now, but it's our little promo video to our community uh, kind of showing what STEM Nation is uh, for, uh, for our students and families. Yeah, we'll drop that link in the chat if that sounds good. Awesome. So moving into kind of how we try to make things happen, like Jason mentioned before, when it was a live event, there's a lot of moving parts, getting coaches at school sites, getting uh, after school uh, teams to kind of prep and compete within their school sites to get ready for the big Olympics type day for Robot Nation um, at uh, Marriott or wherever it was, the, the big event. And so here, knowing that obviously in the pandemic, we can't have a big event, we made it a two month long event where students can basically, um, be a part. It's not a competition anymore. Um, it's pretty much um, open access to everyone to all these different types of lesson activities we created. And so walking through logistics and workflow, I'll kind of walk through a little bit of that. The first part is going to be the vision and the structure. And so it starts with great people. Um, and so one of the chances that Jason and I had as TOSAs was to work with a lot of teachers. And so to build, build that rapport and relationship with teachers, identify forward thinking classroom teachers who uh, really push the envelope themselves um, and then build friendships with them. So outside of just work, um, hanging out with, with some of these people as well, building that rapport and that friendship, we then become comrades in this shared vision. And so those are the people now we call upon and say, hey, we've got this great um, program. We'd love for you to be a part because we know you are innovative and you're a team player. Uh, what do you think? And so both Jason and I actually were classroom teachers, a part of a district initiative um, and joined a program um, from that very same spot too. And so if you're a teacher in the classroom, if there are district type things that are happening and you've got a chance to join, I highly encourage you, put your name in there, try out those new things because that's how we both got started um, with creating uh, to where we are today. It, was, it started with um, some district programs that we got, were a part of. And then from there, that just grew into other things too. So moving on to the next slide, uh, the vision. So it starts with the teachers. We built that relationship with the teachers. And from there, the shared vision was this. Um, first of all, um, it was about access to all of our stu uh, students, no matter where they came from. So we have, uh, I think, 11 um, Title I schools, I believe, in our district um, out of the 20. And so we want to make sure that the content we create and the activities we have are available for all students, whether Title I or not. Um, and so that was a big part of it as well too. And so giving access to all of our students was huge. Uh, that also included technology tools as well, giving access that way. And so every student in our, di in our district has an iPad and then they, have, uh, they should have wireless or internet access in some form, whether at home already or through the hotspots that our district has provided. So the baseline um, system requirements were an iPad or a laptop, some kind of uh, internet connected device and then internet access. Uh, we also made it a value to make sure that everything was asynchronous. So there are all the activities you see on the website are all on demand. Students can do them anytime um, on their own schedule. We also want to make a system, especially this year, that's efficient, that doesn't burden our teachers. Because in our district, our teachers are grooming and Zooming, they call it, where they're teaching both the live in-person kids um, and the Zoomers at the same time. And so we knew that our teacher um, human resource was, was pretty well, um, well spent. And so we don't want to spend too much time um, taxing them. And so we made sure that the system we created was outside of uh, their role, so they didn't have to worry about that piece. And the last thing in terms of the vision and structure was there are three strands that we went with this year. And so um, these activities are all available for K through eight. So thinking of um, all nine grade levels in mind, uh, it had to be kind of broad. And so we have the app and design piece, which is based out of J what Jason mentioned earlier, the Congressional App Challenge, which is about design thinking. 
uh, robotics, which involves computational thinking as well as robots, ozobots specifically, and then also STEM discovery, where these activities um, allowed students to see a career in STEM. So there was one uh, water conservationist, um, or there was an engineer, a solar engine engineer who created panels. And so they got to see a short little video on one person in their career and reflect on that as well. So th those are the three strands that we hit on in terms of for our, um, our vision and our structure. Uh, moving on to the next slide, uh, like we mentioned, building teams and capacity is huge. And so, like we said, um, a lot of our teacher partners were valuable. Uh, we recruited, I think, about 10 teachers to create about 30 lessons. And what's pretty phenomenal is that when you have that team, we have initial visions, but visions can also morph and turn into a lot more when you have great thinkers and great people. And so our activities, if you'll notice, um, if you're in one of the activities later on, um, one of our teachers said, we have a lot of SPET students who would want access as well. And so how can we provide that for them? And so within the Google slide activities, there's a little speaker button. And if a student clicks on that speaker button, they can hear a teacher verbally walking through the activity with them as well too. So providing that greater access um, to our students who might have different needs and challenges was also huge, but that came from a teacher, it didn't come from us. And so building that synergy with people was great and that capacity for them to feel like, yeah, I'm, I'm a part of this idea, I'm helping create this idea as well was humongous. So building that team was, was um, really key. And that, that's something that slow cooks and marinades over time as you build up that team and that, that shared uh, group of people you can really work with um, is a big part. Uh, moving on to the next slide. Um, after that, we identified systems and tools that work for us based on the fact that we have iPads and we have internet access at home. And so we, our platforms were for the event information is that Google site that you see there. Uh, to register, we use Google Forms, of course. Um, and our Google Form is taken down, of course, because the season's over, but um, it was embedded on the site as well. But yeah, the site's there for all event information. And then um, once the students register, then there's a link on the website for them to click on to, to directly join our Google Classroom, where then we pushed out all the activities to all of our students in third through eighth grade. We also recognize some of our kids in pre-K through second don't really know Google Classroom. Uh, they might know Seesaw, they might know something else. Maybe there is no LMS for our primary students. And we knew that also some parents would be um, helping their students with that. So we hosted all the activities on the Google site as well too, which we'll show you later on as well. So everything's either on the site or on Google Classroom as far as our platforms. And so the tools we use were Google Slides, um, Everything's embedded in there. There's videos embedded. Um, the, the verbal links or audio links are in there as well. And then our iPads. And then our last uh, tool, which was valuable, is our Ozobots as well, too, um, where we, we purchased Ozobots and had basically a set at every school site. So whether you're distance learning or if you're a hybrid student, you can go and check out an Ozobot to borrow during STEM Nation season from your school office or school library and media center, and then take it home for about a week and do the activities and then bring it back after that week and recheck it out as you would a library book. So those are the platforms and the tools that we used um, to do this. All right, moving on to the next slide. And so uh, another component of the workflow and the logistics was communicating with our students, making sure that they're engaged. And so uh, we had an eight week season. And so every week we had a couple things. We had a weekly video for sure. And within that weekly video, there were engaging elements. We did silly, like silly dad jokes. We did fun little puzzles in the video, like scramble these words, or what is this picture or the shell game, different types of engaging pieces. Uh, we highlighted certain students as well and said, hey, great job to so-and-so from this school and here's a quick snapshot of what they've done. And then we also weekly prize drawings as well and that got the kids hooked, of course. And so they could have won an Ozobot. Um, they could have won a gift card to Target to purchase some kind of creative tool. And also uh, we gave away vlogging kits. So the stand with their camera ring light so students can become maybe the next YouTube star. But using those creative tools to do something with that to create was the idea behind our prizes. So weekly communication was huge. So our team here created these weekly videos with these engaging elements. And we pushed them out through Google Classroom or we emailed them to the primary parents and students uh, weekly so they can see if they won something. You want me to push play on this, Phil? Uh, sure, if you want to play a little bit of that, not a problem. And can you guys hear the sound on your end? Let's see. No, I don't think so. When you click on share screen, right, you can on the Cindy. bottom left corner of that window, there is a um, share sound. 
I think I heard something just now. Oh, really? The leaderboard, and we're going to recognize all the hard work that a lot of you have done. And so we're going to start with those students who have completed 10 or more activities. And so if you completed 10 or more activities, you are Jaden P, Curie L, Haley K, Christopher K, Michael I, Ellie H, Aditi G, Lincoln F, and the Octavio G, Nicholas D, or more activities. A lot of winners. <laughs> Marcus L coming in place. We have Stephanie T. Awesome job to Stephanie T. And did you know Stephanie T is in third grade or younger? So completing a lot of activities, pretty awesome. Primary grade represent. Good job. And our first place person who's done who's done the most, all 30 activities, is Angie L. Great job, give some applause to Angie Ellen, all of our achievers. Great job to all of you STEM Nation for all the hard work you've done. All right, so that was the most boring part of the videos. <laughs> there are more fun things too. Uh, there's music also embedded as well in the other parts of the video that one of our other team members created. And so they did a phenomenal job with that. Um, but yeah, weekly communications was videos like that basically where we announced prize winners. This was the last um, big winner um, video. And so we had all the, you can see we've given, we gave over 40 prizes away. And again, with the partnership with Ozobot and with our um, district foundation, uh, we're able to buy a lot of those, um, those prizes for our students. So uh, moving on to the next piece. Um, the next portion is progress monitoring, I think. Um, let me see if I'm correct on that. Yeah. And so uh, for our students, it's important that we give them a chance to submit their work and to provide some feedback for them. And so we use Google Classroom comments, private comments through assignments to um, give students quick little comments here and there. And in our district, we had, um, we have, we're a district of about, I think, 13,000 or so. And so we had about a thousand kids who registered for STEM Nation. And so obviously myself and Jason can't comment on thousands of students' uh, projects. So that's where our team of teachers also came in. Or around the clock, we had our teachers help us with um, replying to comments, checking assignments, and then um, checking off if students completed things so we can give them credit and chance or more chances to win prizes. So Google Classroom was huge in that piece. Um, and then for our students in primary, we recognize that since they don't use Google Classroom, how are we going to communicate with those parents and students? And so for them, there's a Google form where parents can fill out to say, hey, my, my child completed these activities, and here's an attached picture or video of them working on that activity. Or if it's more convenient, mom and dad, you can also text this phone number where you can send us a picture and then we've, got, we've captured the work uh, that way too. So giving that access like we talked about was huge. And so for primary students, um, having the text line and the Google form were two ways that we gave our primary parents a way to get in and provide that two-way communication with them. So that's our progress monitoring piece in a short little nutshell. Uh, the next piece is celebrating success, and that's the most fun part. And so after our, our weekly videos, um, our students, we, we notified all of our families, hey, everyone, if you're a part of STEM Nation, whether you won a weekly prize or not, you all get swag, you all get STEM Nation merch. And so we're able to partner and purchase uh, tote bags, uh, t-shirts, as you can see in the slide, um, face masks, STEM Nation masks, and then uh, color changing STEM Nation cups as well too. And so every student who registered and partook in the activities uh, was able to come to our two pickup dates. And so we had a drive through celebration in one of our school parking lots. And so we had music, uh, we had a lot of team members there. And as they drove through, we celebrated them, uh, took their picture, gave them certificates, gave them their swag, and then also if they won a prize, gave them their prize as well too. And so this is definitely the highlight. And so if you're not able to have something next year, or if you're thinking about doing something where it's more um, asynchronous, I think something like this, where you can capture the students' joy and seeing them and celebrating them was huge because it was a highlight for us, uh, seeing the kids again uh, in one place. And I know for Adrian and Melissa too, as you don't get to see kids too often, I know you guys were um, really happy to see kids. And so great event um, and highly recommend that you have some kind of way to actually make that connection with the kids as well too. So that's our celebrating success piece. Yeah, it was so fun for us to be a part of the prize pickups too. I mean, we had, you guys shared with us students' work as they were going, like videos and different challenges they had completed. So seeing some of those students in person was extremely exciting. So thanks for involving us.
All right, and so after that, I think the next piece would be the resources. Uh, you do already have um, the bit.ly to our Google site um, that our awesome team created. Um, we also have, uh, and so on that, actually on the site, um, since we're there, uh, you can see how on the Google slide down on near the bottom, um, our pre-K and second grade students explains, parents, you can use the Google form or the text message way to get assignments. And then um, on the other side of the slide, students, if they click on those, the links, the robotics word, app and design challenge, it's a link to join the Google Classroom automatically. And so um, then they're automatically in. So no need for us to kind of wait for them to join the classroom, send them the code, just click on the link, boom, you're in. You see the, all the activities already. Um, near the top of the page, you'll see three different, um, or more than that, but you'll see a couple things. You'll see the app and design challenge right there. So you're going to click on one of these links. Yeah, that page works. Um, you'll see that on every page, every category, preschool and second grade, you got away. There's your Google form or your number to text. Um, and then below that, you'll see the slide decks where those are the activities. And so students can view them in the website or if they click on the button below that, the little teal blue uh -huh button, it makes a copy for them and they can then work on their iPads or their home devices to work on their activities and it's their own. So they can annotate on there or create content on those slides as well too. So Google Slides, slide, or Google Sites, excuse me, is huge and really valuable in that um, you can do so much with it and embed a lot of Google Suite um, tools there too. So that's our site. Um, another piece, if you'd like as well, is our master spreadsheet we use. Here's a copy of that. And so there's a bit.ly there. And so this is kind of the, work, the workflow we use to track assignments. This is the menu page for our team. And then the next tab below is our main roster. And there's no student data here. So it's a blank slate for you to fill in your student data if you'd like to, like first name, last name, student ID, uh, whatever you want to. And then a checkbox kind of spreadsheet we use to track how many kids, how many assignments each student completed for our prize drawing. And so uh, the tab drill there, if you want to look at it, uh, it might be a good resource. If not, no big deal, but it is there as a blank template for you to kind of ideate off of and maybe create something of your own as well too. So yeah, those are the resources that we have for you. Oh, and I apologize, I think I've got to um, change the sharing settings on that. So I'll do that right now um, with that spreadsheet. Perfect, thanks for sharing those. I think people will find a lot of value in seeing not only how you use Google Sites, but even the detailed spreadsheet of how you structured it and stayed so organized during the whole thing. So thank you. All right, and I think that's it for my portion. Yeah, I believe that brings us to Q&A. There was a question I saw in the chat. Somebody asked, um, did the weekly challenges get harder each week? And I guess I can answer that uh, in the sense that um, there is a progression, but at the same time, uh, we tried very intentionally to make it so that anybody can jump in at any time. So you didn't have to do the app design to get to the robotics or vice versa. Um, you didn't have to go and do the first levels, which were unplugged, no robot needed, to a little more later where you could learn with the robot. But we want to have places where the Ozobot was learned. Like, dude, there's an entry level for those. So there are several robotic activities that were more for introduction level so there is a little bit of a progression i wouldn't say necessarily harder depending on where they come in at uh, but um with the intention was that you could do and try to do as many of the activities in any order you like um so if you thought the unplugged was a little too easy jump straight to the later ones or ones that you see dealing with oh, it was about actual coding or things like that um the app design had a little bit of flow where at the end you try to create or put to reality a prototype of your idea from the first lessons, things like that. But um, I would say that it wasn't necessarily intentionally built to have a progression of harder, easy to hard, but more uh, different access points of where you feel comfortable with. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. uh, there was another question in the Q&A chat from Judith uh, asking about suggestions on how to get partnerships with tech companies to purchase items. And um, for me, uh, I ended up becoming like a shameless uh, like cold calling, uh, like I don't have any shame and I, anytime, anywhere, I'll be kind of bringing up ideas at first to lead to suggestions, to lead to 
asking really nicely in different ways, many ways for things. Adrian and the Ozobot team know sometimes I'm trying to get out from them a couple of t-shirts or things like that. But um, when it comes to, I think, partnering, I wouldn't necessarily for a tech company because you can go that route and be very specific. But I think it's open-mindedness just to know who's willing to be a part of your journey. So if it's a classroom, I think reaching out to people that um, are even just local friends or families or businesses or parents of people that own businesses or people, the world is very big, but also very connected. There are so many people that know somebody that knows somebody that is real involved in something else. And that's kind of the network that um, we always go to first. Um, I, I mean, at one point I was getting too shameless and my wife got mad at me because at parties, I'd just be like, oh, you're from HBO. Hey, can we partner? And, like, and I try to draw a partnership every moment I got and it got a little overwhelming. So I think um, at, 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 at a milder level, um, even the board members in your district, I think, my, uh, are important people you can reach out to. They're there as servants but, and leaders for policy, but they're also members of the community that give you access. So we have uh, our foundation is actually the president is on our board of education. So a board member, as much as I'm sure a lot of uh, educators know, they'll come to your room to see all the good things you do. Uh, sometimes spin the table back and ask them what they're involved in, how they can help. Um, and finances and in I think just support in different ways um, so yeah uh, I, I, I don't know if I answered your question Judith but uh, we got lucky with Ozobot uh, we have seen them also in a lot of conferences so conferences I don't go to the conference only for the sessions I go for the walking the exhibit hall and then seeing what who I can meet and who I can uh, create a conversation and relationship with because you never know when it comes down the line uh, I told the story to Adrian a while back, a couple of times where there's wonderful people on their team, but on their sales side, I didn't really get anywhere when it came to partnership five years ago, but miraculously this year, there were different elements that we were able to connect with and it worked. So it never hurts to act or uh, ask several times. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's a no, then you ask again. I think that if you get no's at least five times, you go five more and then eventually somehow you get something. Um, by the way, throw a plug out to the company CEO. Uh, is it Hamda? No, Nader. Nader. Yeah. Nader. Um, he even contributed a video portion into our video, and it just shows the I think uh, level of connection that the whole company got involved in a lot of ways. So it was fabulous. So uh, Judith, I think it's just asking schmoozing. I think someone put in there in the chat. Yes, Lori, schmoozing is always great. Um, and then shamelessness of cold calling and just reaching out to anybody and everybody at any time you get, it gets somewhere sometimes. Yeah, and I think also connecting with existing partners is huge. So like Jason mentioned, like local partners for sure, that's humongous. Um, I think a lot of companies, if you're able to give them some way of recognizing them, whether it be maybe through branding or uh, through shout outs, some kind of recognition. I think that's what a lot of them are looking for. And I think if you can provide that piece at your school site or your district, then you'll find, you can find, um, I think there are partners out there that would be willing to do that. But if you're already, for example, at a district and you're contracting with company X, it wouldn't hurt to ask that same rep because you already know them or someone from your district already knows them and say, hey, let's take this to the next level in terms of relationship. Um, we wanna do this, can you be a partner with us too? So I think existing people can definitely be um, a part of that as well. And I think Lori brought up a good point. Um, not just only things is what you need. You need support with ideas and know-how. The local colleges, uh, ours is a junior college, Fullerton College, and then Cal State Fullerton. Those are definitely great resources um, where when we did Robot Nation, a lot of our uh, support teachers came from the college. We asked if they had anybody that wanted ours. And not just from the student teaching program, but if it's like computer science, we asked the robotics department or their coding computer science departments or except different, but you would be surprised, I think the different departments that don't even realize that they have a, a place they can contribute in education. And they always think it's the teaching programs or things like that, but it's actually the other sub departments um, as well as the resources they bring and they can bring to the classroom. So if it's sometimes materials, if it's sometimes money, whatever it may be, the colleges won't give money, but the manpower and the different uh, supports are definitely there. Um, and then that leads to other, again, businesses, I think that are linked to the colleges or linked to the community. That helps a lot. Like Fullerton, we're blessed to have a lot of, sometimes I think a lot of different types of companies. 
And that, has, that was also very helpful in building out the support. So I know if it's an inner city, somebody mentioned, I think that doesn't have to be a tech company. That's why I'm saying. I think it's the community that matters more. Yeah, and just to speak to that from the side of one of those tech companies you might be targeting for partnership, um, you know, it did, I mentioned that Fullerton School District have been an Ozbot customer for many years, and that certainly helped. Um, but if you are, Judith, looking for funding for Ozbot classroom sets, we are working really hard to work closely with prospective customers and help you uh, since we're eligible for, for example, American Rescue Plan funds, um, we want to help you find the funding. So if you are ever interested, you can book a demo on our website and one of our account executives, again, will actually get into finding funding with you. Um, and someone mentioned in the chat, I think it was Mary, that there's various state grants coming in as well. So lots of opportunities out there. See any other questions that came through? I think we might have addressed everything. And I will just throw another thing out. I know um, most of the te people in here are teachers or STEM teachers or coaches or librarian. It is. I know. I'm, I'm sure many of you are very uh, connected and passionate about what you do. Uh, I encourage you to continue that and uh, reach out to Ozaba. I'm gonna put a shame, sh like things like that where. Um, it's hard to journey on your own. It gets kind of tiring and it gets kind of demoralizing when you keep running into roadblocks. Hopefully you don't, but if you do, um, I think finding like-minded people to help you along the journey and go that way. Because Phil, for example, we, we work together, we're good friends, but he is an ELA guy, I was a math guy. And at one point we would never thought we would be working together for STEM. And mm -hmm. now we're in the district office doing STEM activities. So I think you'll be surprised at what other teachers may be available to be willing to go on a journey with you in different capacities. And that gets re reinvigorating sometimes, and that will hopefully keep you going because burnout is real. Burnout is, uh, it happens all the time. And then more roadblocks you face, the faster the burnout happens. So I hope uh, from the chat, it seems like a lot of you are very energetic, still at a four, five o'clock almost, willing to join on a webinar and chat on the side. Uh, I hope that uh, you do that as well. I'm sure you do already, but that'd be good to know that that would hopefully keep you going as well. Or eight o'clock in Montreal, maybe, or Manitoba. Oh, so. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and I just have to add, I mean, since, you know, a couple of us got to join for those prize pickup days, um, one theme of what you guys talked about today that came through was that theme of like finding your core team, connecting with other forward thinking teachers, which to your point, Jason, everyone here obviously is. Um, and I just wanted to mention that one of those participating teachers told me that you, Phil, were actually her language arts teacher back in the day when you were in the classroom. So it's really cool to see that you inspired someone, obviously, to go on to a teaching career and, and take these extra steps within that teaching career as well. It means I've got a few more wrinkles than, uh, than <laughs> I wish I had. <laughs> it was so sweet. Cool. Okay. Well, if more questions come up, you can keep dropping those in the Q&A or the chat, but we are going to cover the giveaway. That's always important to get to. Um, let's see. Melissa, are you, how's your Wi-Fi? <laughs> uh, it's a little unstable, but hopefully you all can hear me. Yes. All right. <laughs> Great. Um, yes. So I, let me pull up that giveaway. Um, we're going to have our guests, uh, Phil and Jason, help us determine who our winner is. Those of you that have been in the audience that um, entered the giveaway, you were put into a Google spreadsheet based on um, the order that you filled out that um, form. So let me take a look. One second. Sorry, I'm pulling up the responses. Um, let's see, I will have, Phil, if you could choose a number zero to five. Four. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we heard you. Okay. <laughs> Figure out the winner. Sorry, I think I, I'm uh, cut out there with my unstable connection. Uh, what number was there? It's four. Was it? Four, thank you. And then Jason, uh, numbers zero through five. 
two. Okay, so that's number six when we add them together. So that would be Mitzi Vincent is our winner. Congratulations, Mitzi. If you could email Cassandra at ozabot.com, um, she will get you the educator entry kit. Congratulations. Thanks, Melissa. This is where we go rogue. Do one more. But I don't know if you can. <laughs> Just keep asking. Let's go another one. Sorry. I didn't mean to give you guys that kind of situation. Um, well, thank you so much, everyone. We did want to share a couple handles so you can follow Phil and Jason. So Jason's Ask Mr. Mr. Chong. Phil is at Philly underscore Ling. And then Fullerton SD is also a great follow for more inspiration and ideas. Um, it was really cool to hear from you guys at the very beginning of this webinar that you had some inspiration you were looking to, whether it was what was going on at Legoland or Cal Poly Pomona. And I really think that you're going to inspire some, some more STEM events just coming out of today. So thank you so much for joining us. For having us, everyone. Yeah, thank you very much. This is great. <laughs> And good luck to everyone as you create your own STEM festivals and your whatever STEM looks like in your district. Uh, we're excited for you and hope that uh, something from today may have sparked something or whatever you're doing already um, turns into something even even more beautiful. Yeah, and keep an eye out for an Ozobot challenge coming next year sometime. <laughs> Details to come. All right. Thank Sorry, you, everyone. Before everyone goes, Good I just want to let them know to email support at ozobot.com for uh, PD certificates. If oh. she wanted, did do we have that on the next slide? I don't think so. No. So yeah, that's a great point. Thank you, Cass. If you want a PD certificate for attending today's webinar, email support at ozabot.com. Thank you. Sorry. All right. All right. Bye, Bye everyone. everyone. Good seeing you guys. Bye. All right.